at QuickBooks, and this is an older form of desktop QuickBooks. Currently, as of this year, they are not supporting these older desktop versions uh, for education. They have instead an education portal, and it has online QuickBooks, which looks different, acts different than what you're going to see in these videos. Okay, so you, what you see is a starting box, just like we did for Sage 50. There are companies here that I have worked on before that I can open. They open right from the hard drive. Otherwise, I have to click on Restore. If I want to restore, open a company that's on an external media, such as a flash drive, just like with Sage 50. Or I can create a new company or I can open a sample company. So let's open a sample company and we'll use the sample product-based business. Okay, it's letting us know that you can't use this sample file as a real company file and that they set the date to December 15th of 2022. Okay, uh, the Accountant Center comes up. This can let you know how much is in the checking and savings account and various other accounts and um, various types of transactions and tasks that you might um, find most common are listed here. You can X out of that and you'll see you'll see a navigation window that somewhat reminds you of Sage 50. Only with QuickBooks they have the vendors, the customers, and employees all on the same big window. So under your vendors, here's your purchase orders, receiving inventory, entering bills against the inventory, uh, or entering bills. Now what this is, um, if you are uh, entering the bill on a different day than what you receive the inventory. So the inventory may come in, your shipping receiving department is listing on a receiving report all the inventory that came in. And then the bill, the invoice, the purchase invoice comes in to the accounts payable person at a separate day. So in that case, you would be using the receive inventory to show, okay, this is the stuff we got in and who it came from, and the enter bill when we finally actually receive the bill for that stuff. Now, if you're receiving the inventory and you're receiving the bill on the same day, which is what we normally do for our projects, you can just go straight into enter bill. Then, when you go to pay the bill, there you have a pay bill, okay? So that works fairly similar uh, to what we had. Um, if you want to set up new vendors or um, edit any vendors, you would click on the vendors tab at the top of that section. We have the customer section and again, there's sales orders if you want, um, or estimates, which is sales quotes, okay? If you don't eat, need either of those, you're just selling on account, you would have where you create invoices, okay? And then you receive the payment. Now, one thing QuickBooks has that 
we didn't see in Sage 50 was that there was a way to create a cash sale separate from receiving payments. So if you had a cash sale, instead of creating invoice, you will simply do this sales receipt. If you have a sale on account, you create the invoice and then receive the payment. Another thing that's um, a little different is that you need to record the deposit. Otherwise, it's all being shown. It's age 50, they're assuming the deposits are going into the bank on the same day you received them. You can set up the deposits separately if you want to in Sage 50. Otherwise, it assumes they're being made on the same day. With QuickBooks, it assumes that the deposits are not made unless you do this record deposit button and go in there and say which amounts that we received actually got deposited on which day. And the rest of them will sit there in a undeposited funds account. So um, if you have a trial balance and there's a big chunk of money sitting in an undeposited funds account, then that means you didn't deposit them. Okay. Uh, in the customer section, there's also uh, finance charges and statement charges and statements. Now, statements are where we have sales on account and it's the end of the month and we're sending out statements either online or we're sending them snail mail. We're sending them a statement showing, okay, these are the invoices that if you have not yet paid and when their due date is. And then if they're late paying, we can charge uh, finance charges. Here's also a button for refunds and credits. Again, if you want to set up new customers or edit customer data, you would click on this customer button. Finally, at the bottom, they have an employee section. Now, when you set up a new a company and you say that you don't need employees, then this section would not be there. So um, here's a payroll center to set up the payroll. You enter the timesheet information. Um, here's a button to pay the employees. Here's a button to pay your ta payroll tax liabilities to the IRS or to the state. Um, and here's a button to process uh, payroll forms such as the quarterly payroll taxes and uh, W-2s at the end of the year, etc. Okay, over to the right we have the company section and that shows that's where we can do the chart of accounts. We can edit it, set it up, etc. Um, inventory uh, items, um, inventory activities, items and services. So when we set up our inventory items, we can also set up services um, as opposed to just products. Um, we can order checks if this was real life. We can deal with a calendar, okay, etc. Uh, down in the banking section, besides recording the deposits, you can reconcile the bank accounts. Here's a check register. We had a project in Sage 50 where we just went into the check register and put the information in and you can do the same thing here. Here's our write checks button, uh, printing out checks, and entering credit card charges. Now, um, one thing with vendors and writing checks with Sage 50, you only put in a vendor company if you 
buy stuff from them on account. If you're going to get a bill and pay the bill later, then you set them up as a vendor. If it's something where you don't have a bill, like maybe just paying, you've got to pay the rent on the first of every month to Mr. Landlord, then you would use write checks. Whereas in QuickBooks, you set up a vendor for everyone you are ever going to write a check to. So even though you're not entering a bill first, you're only writing a check, you still need to set up Mr. Landlord as a vendor in QuickBooks.